tired of living in a big city? Hate all the traffic and drama that comes with living near other people? Tired of this? And maybe you should move to Kansas. A super great state. Not really. Kansas offers you the chance to get a new start. There's actually big cities here, so if you want to be around people, you can do that. Or if you want to be alone for a while, you can certainly do that. But how do you know where to live in Kansas? You probably want a safe place, right? Because you're not leaving your ghetto just to move to some other ghetto in the middle of nowhere. One way we can measure that is by looking at danger levels. Typically, dangerous places also have bad schools and crummy neighborhoods and people with bad attitudes who don't want to work. So pack your bags, people. We're taking a jaunt through the most dangerous places in Kansas to kind of eliminate your potential landing spots because I'm sure where should I move to Kansas has been keeping you up at night. You know it has. Ooh, where are we? Looks like somewhere bad and isolated. This isn't somewhere you'd want to live. This is Newton, Kansas. Now, why is this a dangerous place? I mean, there's only 18,830 people here. Well, 100 people got beat up here last year, meaning your chances of getting punched in the face are a 1 in 188, and your chances of being robbed are 1 in 33. Now, for perspective, we should show you that overall, even though it's kind of ghetto and drama in many of these Kansas cities, the types of crimes in these smaller places are much different than in a real ghetto. For instance, let's Google Newton, Kansas crime. You can see going back to even the beginning of the year, there isn't much going on in Newton proper. Now let's Google Memphis, Tennessee crime. There's more stuff going on here in the last week than there was in Newton in the last eight months. But things are going to get worse fast here in Kansas. So hang on, Newton was kind of an easy one. Way down here near the Oklahoma state line, where the tumbleweeds roam, is the teeny city of Arkansas City. It's not near Arkansas, really, but that's this place's name. Here, it's more of a property crime thing. This little place has crime that's twice the national average. One out of 20 people here has something stolen from them. Does that make this place a dangerous one? Not necessarily, but it still sucks here. Here's an indication of the type of scum that roams the Kansas countryside. Just last month, a group of thieves went into a local Dillon's, which is a grocery store chain in Kansas, and stole wallets from little old ladies. Took them right out of their purses while they were shopping. Poor little old ladies. Then they went to the local Walmart and maxed out their accounts, taking $2,300 in goods. My question is, how do lowlifes get away with that? Like, if this lady here walked into a Walmart and bought five big TVs, wouldn't that look suspicious? I guess not. Kansas City, Missouri is a real gem of a place. Statistically, it's the fifth most dangerous place in America, right behind St. Louis, Missouri. And on the fringes of the Kansas City metro area is a smallish city called Leavenworth. It's where some of the worst people live in this general area, and frankly, part of why Kansas City, Missouri is such a bad place to live. Leavenworth is actually the second most violent place in the state, statistically. Can you believe it? This little place? You have a 1 in 100 chance of being a victim of violence if you live here, which is just terrible for a small Midwestern city. The city's violence is also 150% above the national average. What is going on? Look at the local paper, the Leavenworth Times, and check out the dates on these articles. These articles are all in the last month, and it's all about shootings and assaults and even a murder. Dang, Kansas, y'all have some angry people. Why is that? Most of you guys are so nice, but WTF? Odds are, if you haven't yet been the victim of a robbery in Iola, Kansas, you haven't lived here long, or it's coming your way. Every year, 1 in 25 people has something stolen, like a wallet or a car, their dignity. Look at this guy. He's wanted for armed robbery in Iola. Creepy. You just never know what's going to happen on any given day, said Iola Police Chief Jared Warner. Yeah, you think? Now, being the seventh most dangerous city in a state like Kansas means... It can't be that bad, right? I mean, sort of. Look at the seventh most dangerous city in California. It's a place called San Bernardino. And I'm 99% sure that living in San Bernardino is far worse than living in Iola, Kansas. So let's keep that into consideration as we move on to Great Bend, the fourth most violent place in the state. This little city of 15,000 people way out in the middle of nowhere, like two hours from Wichita, is simply not a safe place. The good news here is that crime is dropping here at a rate of 10% last year, so that's good. Now, we've clearly seen 
that a lot of crime and violence in Kansas is among smallish cities on the fringes of the metro areas. Now, why is that? I mean, Kansas ranks 15th in the nation for property crimes per capita. That's high. Many might speculate that Kansans are stealing for drugs, but research has shown that Kansas ranks 7th lowest in terms of drug use and addiction and 3rd lowest overall for drug issues. Anyways, I couldn't find an easy answer as to why everybody steals here, so we can just speculate that Kansas people are stealing for their own personal agendas. Now we finally come to Kansas' dirty little secret, Southeast Kansas. We're going to be talking about Southeast Kansas a lot for the next couple minutes. That's because S-E-K-S-U-C-K-S, at least for safety, income levels, and things to do in schools, and of course, crime. Southeast Kansas is down here, somewhat near the Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas borders, and it's a place that's struggling. You probably haven't heard of our first little Southeast Kansas place, Parsons. It's a little stop in this troubled area. Criminals in the area know it well, though. Here in Parsons, the motto is a great place to live, but... Being the third most dangerous place in the state certainly stains that distinction. Parsons peeps have a 1 in 28 chance of being robbed every year and a 1 in 100 chance of being beat up or raped. And it's gone up by 30% over the last few years. Goodbye, Parsons. We cannot wait to leave here. Topeka is a city you've heard of, though, right? It's the fifth biggest city in the state and the state capital. I mean, come on. But it's shrinking here, actually, and for good reason. Look at this. All of the other big cities in Kansas are growing, but not Topeka. Why? Crime's a big part of it. Of all other cities in the Sunflower State, Topeka is the second worst for thefts. One in 18 residents was robbed last year, which is just about as high as you'll see anywhere in America. Here's some perspective. A typical Topeka city block has 25 homes on it, and the average house in Kansas has 2.6 people. So that means there's 65 people per block in Topeka. So three people per block are robbed every single year? That's just crazy. Like, can you imagine? No wonder the population here is shrinking. And no wonder the population in Kansas is shrinking. Not by much, but it is going down. And it's the 10th fastest shrinking state of all. I mean, when your state capital is that bad, everyone's probably going to leave, right? Coffeeville is another beat-up, run-down, dangerous hub in southeast Kansas. Located 45 minutes southwest of Parsons, right along the Oklahoma state line, this is just far enough away that the criminals can kind of move back and forth, selling TVs and video game consoles to one another to earn money for various recreational distractions. Here in the middle of the prairies, life is already hard enough. Work's hard to come by. Entertainment's hard to find. A lover is probably impossible, at least somebody with their life in order. And then you have a small town of 9,000 people like Coffeeville, where everyone knows each other, and they steal from each other. Now, I thought Topeka population shrinkage was bad. Look at Coffeeville, minus 7.91%. That's by far the highest in the whole state outside of independence. This place is even smaller than Coffeeville, and getting even smaller than Coffeeville by the week. Also in southeast Kansas, it's home to a bunch of assaults, a few rapes, tons of cars and wallets are stolen, and a murder. But that's outdated. I mean, look at this. Just a week ago, there were two murders here on two separate occasions on the same day in a city of 9,000 people. That's like 0.02% of the whole population killed in one night. For a frame of reference in Los Angeles, a city of 4 million people, if 0.02% of their population were killed in one night, that would be 800 people in one night. Anyway, Southeast Kansas is to be desired. This is our last stop here, thank God, but it's clear that these once decent places to live down here, which lost energy jobs years ago, are sad, sad places in this sort of proud state. It's a nine county little corner pocket that sucks up all hope like a whirlpool. You could say Southeast Kansas is this state's bathtub drain. Okay, so are there any safe places in Kansas? Yes, most of them are on the south side of Kansas City, Kansas. It's mostly wealthy white families in cute little suburbs. The state's faucet. Okay, enough bathtub analogies. We do have one more city to talk about. Wichita, the state's biggest city. It's a big city, somewhat. This community of 391,000 people is unsurprisingly going to have a lot of crime. And it does. It ranks first in violent crimes and first in property crimes per capita in this state. If you live here, you have a 1 in 84 chance of being raped, attacked, or killed every year. There were 38 murders in Wichita last year, which is actually lower than in years past, so at least there's good news. But come on, people, this is Kansas. Sometimes, I bet people here just want to click their heels and just get the heck out of here. 
I guess one reason crime is going down here in Wichita is partly due to cheaper meth. Less expensive drugs means you don't have to steal as much. And apparently, according to Wichita PD, meth prices are at an all-time low. Meth is now selling for $2,400 a pound, or about nine times less than just five years ago. The market's saturated. There's no incentive for criminals to steal to finance their habits like in the past, one officer said. Thieves are still breaking into things. They're just not taking as much. That's just sad. Crime going down because drug prices aren't as high. Not because they want to change, not because of prevention or intervention. They're being nicer because the drugs are easier to find. Like a kid stops throwing a tantrum when you give them their boppy. Well, there you go. If that doesn't give you an idea of what it's like to live in Kansas, then well, go see it yourself. But otherwise, trust me, if you want to move to Kansas, move to the South Kansas City suburbs. Don't move to a big city and please stay away from Southeast Kansas. You will not like it there, nor will you remain safe. Okay, before I end, I wanted to say something nice. If you live in one of these Kansas cities and you feel unsafe, maybe it's time to adopt a dog. They're good for protecting you and they're great for camaraderie and they're just so fun to have around. You can get a dog at one of the Kansas adoption centers or shelters in links I put in the description. Get a dog. You'll do the dog a favor and your family a favor and your safety a favor. The absolute end.